We have long heard that climate change is imminent, but recent projections that the entire state of Florida may be underwater have given many great pause for concern. We invited two guests to share their thoughts on the impact that climate change may have not only to the value of real estate market, but to insurance, property insurance as well. We welcome Roy Oppenheim, co-founder and senior partner in the law firm Oppenheim Law, and Shahid Hamid, director of the Laboratory for Insurance, Economic and Financial Research, and professor in the Finance and College of Business at Florida International University. Thank you both for joining me today. So Roy, uh, let me start with you. Do you see that, you know, climate change, first of all, it's projected that we could really see the impact of flooding and, uh, and all of the, the, the issues related to this type of catastrophe or challenges really affecting us as early as 2060. That's really hard to get your arms around because most of us can't even think of what we're going to be doing tomorrow, much less 2060. What effect does this have on real estate values? We, if you judge by cranes, it's like nothing. Miami-Dade continues to grow and very close to the water at that. First of all, thanks for having me back, Helen. It's always a pleasure to, to be here. Um, I think short term in terms of values, it probably is having little impact. But if we look at, at what has happened just in the Philippines, or we look at, at what happened in A1A last year, that a part of it was just completely washed out, we're starting to see in slow motion that long term, there are going to be serious seismic effects uh, on the real estate market. And you know, if you take a look at like Rolling Stones just did an article a few weeks ago on Goodbye Miami, where they're anticipating that Miami could go the way of Atlantis. You know, wherever Atlantis may be. On the other hand, maybe we're just going to go the way of Venice, where we're going to learn to adapt mm. and deal with flooding, and people are going to put their gators on, and we're going to start walking on, on, on elevated platforms uh, every, every, you know, every few weeks or a few months, and we're just going to learn to adapt. And so, uh, you know, probably Shai can talk about what, what, what the likelihood of these events uh, happening are going to be. Well, the, uh, there are two basic effects of climate change. First of all, you have warming temperatures, which is going to create, so to speak, uh, more intense hurricanes, but less frequent hurricanes. So when you talk about the impact on insurance, for instance, we're not completely sure. Uh, if you have uh, less hurricanes, especially category one, two, and three, you're going to have lower losses overall. If you have more intense hurricanes, you're going to have higher losses. And I think we need more modeling to determine what the impact would be. And on the other hand, you have an impact on sea level. That's going to, sea level has been rising, but an inch per decade for the last, I would say, 100 years. Now, a lot of people look at an inch and say, Shahid, that's nothing. Why should we worry about an inch or four inches in 40 years? Well, if you have an increase of, say, one foot in the sea level, you're going to have at least four to five billion dollars in properties affected, losses. Hmm. You see, you see what if I you have uh, another foot, you will have 41 billion. So you, you, you have exponentially increasing losses with each inch. So, so, so correct me if I'm wrong. It, it seems to me that what happens in Key West is going to be kind of a harbinger of what's going to happen to maybe the entire South Florida area over a period of time. But it's going to happen probably in slow motion because Key West is so much more vulnerable than, than the rest of South Florida that they're already preparing and doing some things to try and, and raise many of their buildings and are trying to anticipate uh, more floods that, that are going, going but is to occur. It, but is it in slow motion? Because there are different it's, models that suggest different things. Yes, it's in slow motion. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. Sea level has been rising since 10,000 years, since, ever since we came out of Ice Age. So that's, you know, there's a natural phenomena. However, so, so that's part of the issue of why people find climate change so difficult to get their arms around as to, and, and then you go into the political issues or the ecological issues be, behind it, you know, is it man-made or not man-made? The fact is, it is occurring. It that's is all a, we, for, yes. for, our, for the purposes think, of this discussion, that's all we need to worry about. Yes, there's no controversy. Every, all sides believe sea rise are rising. It's a question of how much. I, I want to talk a little bit about the impact of insurance, because insurance obviously impacts folks who have mortgages, which is most people like you and me. But there's a whole class of people who do buy along the water, and many of it's foreign money that's coming from, from an, an inflationary economy where they're looking to put their money in a safe place. They themselves don't necessarily need to buy insurance. Maybe their condo association does, but they themselves are free to buy, buy, buy a condo 
condo, buy a home, and not have insurance. Yeah, but who's going to want to insure here if you're looking at, you know, these rising sea levels or even the possibility of fewer but stronger hurricanes? But from their perspective, the risk that they're facing day to day of their money being deflated in, 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 in an economy that, that, that is, is, is just massively in, inflated, meaning that, that their value, their buying power is dropping, the risk of a, of a hurricane or of global warming 20 or 30 years out pales compared to the risk that they're facing every day. So, so from their perspective, this is not affecting the, the, the real estate market on a day-to-day -day basis. But Shane, when, when you look at this and you look at, the, at, the, at, the, at how insurance is impacted, it hasn't, it, it has no. an effect also on, on real estate. Yes, it absolutely does. I mean, insurance is critical to real estate uh, and to economic development in general. The insurance industry right now is not alarmed. It's sort of uh, looking, you know, trying to figure out there's a lot of uncertainty. I think it will take another 15 to 20 years to get a handle on exactly how fast the sea is going to rise. There's a lot of controversy. We have a wide range of estimates going from something like uh, one feet to all the way to six feet. And yet it has a very immediate effect, Shade, when we look at where we are right now as far as Miami-Dade County has to be looking at refurbishing its uh, water pipe infrastructure for water and sewer. Yes. And, and this is going to have, this has to have an impact on the type of engineering that's designed for that. Yes. There's no question that at some point some investment has to be made. But we have to also look at when it should be done. You don't, you don't want to build uh, you, you know, barriers and so on for something that's going to happen 50 years down the line. So the, it's, it's a question of what sort of investment we need to make, what sort of technology we need to adapt, as well as when we should do it. And of and course you say that we, we really don't know, and prior to taping you were telling me that it's going to take some time before we can have a real sense of when we're looking at a critical time. How much time are we looking at? I think we're talking about 15 to 20 years. So, Roy, some people would say that maybe before you sell property, let's say not right now, but 15 years from now, there should be a disclaimer that says, you know what? Your property may have very little value once a big storm comes. You, you know, there, there are some disclaimers that we have now. One's for radon, and, you know, I don't know the last time someone died of radon poisoning here in Florida, but it is a, a common occurring natural phenomenon. You have these radon warnings, and you also have these lead paint, war lead paint warnings, which, which are legitimate, but they usually go back to properties that, that are pretty old. So, so there is a history uh, in the real estate business uh, to provide certain kinds of warnings. I think doing it now would be a little bit like Chicken Little. But at the same time, I think that it's going to have to be a discussion at some point once the modeling is, is in place to let people know that they're in a vulnerable area and that at some point their value of real estate may decline because of ecological impact. And Shahid, we have a minute left. What do we need to know? What, what's, given your studies, what's the most important thing viewers need to take away from this debate from your perspective? Well, uh, sea level is going to rise and we need to be aware of it. And at some point, maybe 10 years, 15 years down the line, we'll have better information. And at that point, I think we have to be concerned. And about. of course, your investigation and your work at FIU is very critical to best understand what's going on. Yes, particularly um, impact on hurricane losses as well as uh, storm surge. And Roy, as far as property values, you indicate that there's no immediate effect, but you know, I mean, people, are, people, people would look at this and say, when I buy a property, I want to hold on to it for a few years, and not just for speculation, but you know, there is a real right. chance that certainly coastal development will have an impact. When I was on this show, I think back in 05 or 06, way before Katrina, I had said to you that there would be an exogenous event that would ultimately knock us off the, the real estate bubble. I'm going to say it again. There'll be an exogenous event. It, it'll be a climate-based event this time that will knock us off. More uh, than our, more than uh, Hurricane Sandy or Superstorm Sandy. Well, Katrina did it at that point, and it was yeah. because of part of the CNN effect because it was just such a constant right. impact, and it affected all of our, our collective psyche, and and, it, and and I think it affected our confidence in ourselves. And I think to some extent we could end okay. up having such an event unfortunately down the road again. I hope it's a long way down the road, but we'll see. We're out of time. I'd like to thank Roy Oppenheim and Shahid Hamid for joining us, and I'm Helen Foray. Thank you, thank you for watching. See you next